The Brunswick Balky Colander Company, Brunswick, the number one name in bowling, presents the 12th Annual Individual All-Star Match Game Bowling Tournament held under the auspices of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America, direct from the Chicago Coliseum. And good evening, everyone. Fred Wolf speaking to you from the Chicago Coliseum, the scene of the 12th Annual Individual Match Game Championships, where the nation's top bowling stars are in competition for the two most coveted crowns in the 10-pin sport, the match game king and the match game queen of the bowling world. And it looks like 1952 is the year that will do it for them. Carter now stepping up in the fifth frame. Carter, incidentally, gets a callus in the palm of his right hand. There's a strike. Those red crowns scattering all over. Carter takes his seat and up steps Junie McMahon. Say, did you know that young lady? Do you know that young lady right there? Sure you do. That's Marion Latterwick, now four times the champion. Here's somebody else you know, Joe Wilman, a former champion. And this young man, Dick Hoover, the 1950 champion. Yes, an overwhelming majority of this year's finalists in this great all-star bowling tournament rolled their own Brunswick Mineralite ball, the highest scoring ball ever developed. Follow the lead of these champions. Get your own personally fitted Brunswick ball. Then bowl Brunswick like the champions do. There's McBann in the six, on the nose, leaves the 310. Joe Wilman is leading Eddie Lebanski by five pins at the end of four frames. This is the final game, the 100th game, and Lebanski would like to win this one to keep that second position. Here's McMahon throwing that back of, the, of his as he does on Cross Alley Spares, putting the ball right between the 310 and converting it. But he's had two open frames. And up steps Don Carter. Now in this match, it was set up this way. Carter had a lead of 6.43 Peterson points. McMahon's job. There's a strike by the new champion. McMahon's job was simply this, that he had to win all four games by a margin of 144 pins. And that's asking quite a lot when you have a competitor like Don Carter out there. So here's what's happened. In the first game, McMahon was the winner, 192 to 173. So it still was possible that McMahon could do just that, pick up the 144 pins. But Carter won the second game, 187 to 159, just like that. And that's three in a row for Carter. And then Carter, freewheeling with the title in his pocket, Shot 228 the third game to McMahon's 182 and now has a triple up here in the 100th game as the curtain is beginning to fall on this, the greatest of all bowling tournaments. One of the greatest tests that could be asked of a bowler in that they must bowl 100 games over nine days on brand new alleys specially constructed for the event here in the Chicago Coliseum by the Brunswick Bulky Colander Company. Here's McMahon on the Brooklyn side and Junie has himself three frames to go. And then I imagine Junie will return to Fairlawn, New Jersey and take himself a rest. We're going to see if we can check the, the games for the Bill Lillard, Eddie Brocious match. All three games, they're going into their fourth game now. As Jimmy Butts, who is helping us here, is going down to take a look at the telescore. McMahon on the nose and he has the 410. 410 split. Another youngster, Stan Gifford from Portland, Oregon, a 20-year-old young fellow, will also be certainly much wiser as McMahon just missed the four. Taking the eight pins, cutting him off at 118 in the eight, while Carter steps up now with three strikes. Started with a strike, three spares, and now three strikes. And here's the winner and the new champion, Don Carter looking good and he's in there for four in a row. Here's the winner and the new champion, Don Carter. Finished fourth last year. This is his fourth All-Star. He's been bowling 13 years, drawing and missing the head pin, leaving the one, two, four and the eight. But he'll have a 220 game if he converts this one and gets his spare in the 10th frame. And the match between Bill Lillard and Eddie Brocious, the two Chicago stars, 
Brocious won the first game 189 to 176. Lillard coming back to win the second 245 to 180 and also the third game 235 to 182. Don Carter, who incidentally has the high, uh, high game in the qualifying rounds at 279, converts the spare, and here he is, the winner, and the new champion, Don Carter, because I doubt whether we'll be able to get in a word with Don, as our time is running right along. Say, does this young lady know what she's talking about? Be sure to do your Christmas shopping late. That's right, I said late. And you can, if you shop the easy Brunswick gift certificate way. As late as Christmas Eve, you can stop by at your favorite bowling establishment, jewelry, sports, or department store, and pick up this wonderfully convenient Brunswick gift certificate. It's the easy way to give your bowler his own personally fitted high-scoring Brunswick bowl, streamlined bag, and shoes. For that bowler on your Christmas list, give all three the easy Brunswick gift certificate way. Judy McMahon in here now. We're in the closing minutes of this, the 12th annual All-Star Tournament at the Chicago Coliseum. As McMahon throws a beautiful strike in the ninth, and he's had his troubles in this, the 100th game. Judy McMahon, who won this event twice. He won it in 49, averaging 214. He won it last year, averaging 209, and he has himself a double. And, of course, as Judy realizes, he's got to throw two more balls now. I might say that uh, we certainly have a capacity house here at the Coliseum tonight watching the final night of action. And Junie McMahon stepping in here now on the 10th. He has his first strike. He had one in the ninth. Two more balls to throw. And Junie will be the former champion. There it is. It looks good. It's in. And folks, that about brings down the curtain on the 1952 National Match Game Championship the World Series of Bowling. And the Brunswick Bonky Colander Company has been very happy to bring you the finals of this, the 12th annual individual All-Star Match Game Tournament from the Chicago Coliseum in Chicago. So it's congratulations to the new king of the bowling world, Don Carter of Detroit, the queen of the bowling world for the fourth straight year, Marion Ladawick of Grand Rapids. Now your host, Brunswick, wishes you a very Merry Christmas. And this is Fred Wolf saying good night, good bowling from the Chicago Coliseum and reminding you that you don't have to play a sport to be a sport. This is ABC Television Network.